As crazy as it feels to say this with my fall decor behind me, Christmas is coming. So today we are gonna kick off the 2021 Christmas DIY season here at Whiskey & What with a ton of Christmas DIY inspiration. They're gonna be affordable, they're gonna be easy, they're gonna be adorable, and there's no way that anybody's gonna guess that you made them with Dollar Tree items, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit, my name's Whitney, and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor as well as Cricut projects, wood builds, just really all DIY stuff. So if you love DIY, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video, including all of the additional Christmas DIYs I've got coming your way. A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. We will talk more about them in a little bit. And also a huge thank you to Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap for partnering with me to do a collab today. We did this for the fall. We shared a ton of inspiration with you guys to kick off that season. And judging by the views, you guys loved it. So we're gonna do it again and we're gonna bring you even more Christmas inspiration. So without further ado, let's get Christmas crafting. Up first are these really cozy and high-end snowball tea light votives. So these start with Dollar Tree styrofoam balls. You can get them in packs of two or three. I ended up going with the size that comes in a pack of two because I wanted them to be a little bit bigger. I started by trimming off a little bit of the bottom of the styrofoam ball just so it wouldn't roll away on me when it was done. And if you can't find these at Dollar Tree, Walmart, Michaels, a ton of other places have them, so don't worry. Then I grabbed some tea light candles. I got this pack two for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. I traced the tea light on the top of my ball so I knew how big I needed to cut my hole and then I used my Arteza hobby knife to start slicing. The goal here is to hollow out the center without removing all of the sides of the snowball. That's how you get the glow from the inside effect that we're going for. Once you're at a good place to start testing, you can insert your tea light and see if it sits where you want. Do that and scoop it out with a spoon or a knife until you get it where you want it. Then you can turn on your tea light, pop it in, and you are all set. These are so pretty. You could add some Epsom salt if you wanted to, but these are just the styrofoam and they look so good as snowballs and they are super fun and cozy. This next one is a tried and true whiskey and wet favorite. I absolutely love making over these candles and I wanted to share them again in case anybody missed them. So these are Dollar Tree's pillar candles and then I cut out sayings to dupe Ray Dunn. I use the fonts either the skinny or a matic. A matic's a little bit thicker so it's a little easier to weed or you can use whatever font you like. I type out whatever saying that I want and then I just apply them with some transfer tape. If you want something the full width of your candle, I use the measurement of seven inches wide to get it to be the height of the candle. But these you can customize any way you want and they're really fun to fill out vignettes. This gorgeous luminary I made for Christmas in July this year and it's one of my favorites of all time. I decided to start with this Dollar Tree five by seven frame but you can make this whatever size you want. I measured my piece of glass on a scrap piece of 1x4 and I measured and cut it to the width. Because of how I was laying it, it was about 7 inches wide. If you don't have a chop saw, no worries. You can definitely cut a 1x piece of wood on a miter box, so I will link that down below. It's a lot cheaper and easier to store. Then to the same measurements as that 1x4, I'm also cutting a piece of 3 quarter inch square trim and 1 quarter inch square trim. That's how we're going to make the little ledge to hold our glass in our luminary. Before I stain, I'm gonna use a sanding block to get down any of the rough edges. And then I'm taking some Gorilla Wood Glue you can get for a couple bucks at Walmart and I'm gluing down the edge of the wood and then I'm gonna glue it flush with the bottom of my one by four. Once I get it where I want it, then I'm going to use my DeWalt clamps, but you can use whatever you have just to hold it tight for about 15 minutes so that it is glued together. Then I did not forget about my quarter inch piece of trim. We're gonna put that together after we stain. It just makes it a lot easier than having to get in teeny little crevices with stain. Then I decided to go with Briar Smoke by Verithane because it matches my house, but you could use whatever stain or paint that you would like. And then while the stain was drying, I took the glass from the frame and I gave it three coats of this frosted glass spray paint. That's what's gonna give it that a little bit of opaqueness that is gonna make the luminary look so good. Once everything was dry, it was time to glue on my little ledge. So I applied a little bit of glue. I got it kind of where I thought it needed to be. And then I made sure that my glass would fit in 
kind of snug, but not too snug. So here's what it looks like when it's all assembled. Then my last step was to take this silhouette of the Holy Family, which I got off Etsy. I will link it down below. I just added a little bit of thickness to the bottom so the black area was a little bit thicker and it filled the frame a little bit better. I applied it to the side without the frosted spray paint. So here you're looking at the side that is just glass. The back is where the spray paint was. And that's how you're going to get this kind of shiny but also opaque look. To make it glow, you can add whatever you want behind it. Tea lights, a three wick candle. You can also add some fairy lights, whatever you have on hand. Here, I'm just using a three wick candle and it makes it glow so nice. I can't wait to break this out for Christmas. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm a huge fan of using lights and candles in my Christmas decor. It just really brightens my spirits and I love how warm and cozy it makes the room feel. So for this one, we're going to make some DIY mercury glass holders. These can retail for stupid expensive and so we're going to dupe them for a lot less. I originally found this project when I made a ton of these for my wedding. And so to make a Dollar Tree, I'm just using some Dollar Tree candles that I either didn't like the smell of or they were almost done burning. I put them in a pot with some boiling water. Make sure that you are super careful with this. Then I'm just kind of using a spoon to get everything, including the wick remnants out. So then you'll have these cute little glass containers, but you can do this technique I'm gonna show you with any glass container. So I'm gonna take one part white vinegar and one part water, put it in a trigger sprayer container, and also grab some mirror effect spray paint. Start by spraying your glass with that vinegar and water mixture, and then go over the top lightly with some of that mirror effect spray paint. Then to get the mercury glass effect, you're going to dab off any of the areas that bubbled up with a just regular paper towel. And then you can continue that around the outside so you got the whole thing covered. You can let it dry a little bit and then do as many coats as you want to get the look that you want. I typically do two to three coats just depending on how much I sprayed within those other coats. But with this one, I ended up doing the three coats so that you don't really see the candle too much inside, but you do see the glow. Like I mentioned, these can retail for so expensive. And so DIYing these for relatively cheap is awesome. They fit with any Christmas style decor. You could also do the same effect with a metallic gold spray paint as well if gold is more your style. This next project is a showstopper and you're not gonna guess what we're using to make these, but I absolutely love how they turned out. Also, huge shout out to Toolbox Divas. That's where I originally saw this project and I had to try them for myself. I started with two Dollar Tree pool noodles, but you could also use some insulation for pipes that you get at Home Depot. I've had a lot of you suggest that that is something that you could do if you can't find pool noodles. And I took my noodles and cut them into about equal pieces. They're about 18 inches each, but I liked that they weren't all matchy matchy. Then I'm taking a roll of craft paper. This is also from Dollar Tree. You can usually find it in their shipping section. If not, it might be with their Christmas supplies now that Christmas is coming out. I'm just making sure I have pieces that will wrap around each of my noodles as well as 12 ends of circles that I'm tracing here so that I can cover the ends of my pool noodles as well so that you don't see any of the green noodle. Once those circles were cut, then I took those rolls off of each of the pieces and I cut them into little strips. Now I cut them and crinkled them. You could crinkle then cut. It's totally up to you. Then it's time to start applying. So I used some Mod Podge. You're gonna need a decent amount for the ends here and applied my circles to either end. And then I went through and did a coat of Mod Podge and then wrapped my little crinkled strips around the outside. Now you don't need to worry about getting Mod Podge over the top of your craft paper because that is going to deplete all the nice faux birch look you're going for but you wanna make sure that you put enough on the edges so that those don't pop up. Then you're just gonna work your way up each of your pieces for however many faux birch logs you want. And once you are done with that, it's gonna look like this. And then we're gonna grab some toilet paper. I'm taking one square of toilet paper and I'm applying it to create some faux knots on these faux birch logs. I'm just scrunching it up, putting it on there, and then using Mod Podge around the edges to get it to stay. I did two to three on each log. Then to get that look, we're gonna do several layers of different paint. The first is gonna be white chalk paint. 
So I'm going through and doing kind of a cross between a dry brush and a full coverage. You want it to be covered so it looks like the white birch wood, but you don't want to cover it too much that you are not going to see any of that brown craft paper pop through. Here's the look you're going for. It's a lot easier to show you than explain it, but you want to make sure that you're covering it, but also have that pretty crinkle texture that you're getting from the craft paper. The next layer is going to be a gray wash. So I just took a little bit of medium gray paint with some water, mixed it up in a cup. Then I'm gonna brush that all over the top of my faux logs. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you get it over the top of your little toilet paper pieces because you wanna start getting that to mat down so it doesn't look like a mound. Once that's done, we're gonna do some brown paint. I use the color Nutmeg Brown and mix that with some water as well and do the exact same process. So go over the whole thing and also make sure you're hitting the edges of your little knots. Once you've done your white paint, your gray wash and your brown wash, it's going to look like this. And it really is starting to look like faux birch. The last step is to take a darker gray paint and add a little bit to your gray wash that you have left. You may have to add a little bit more water as well. And you're gonna go over the tops of those pieces of toilet paper and remove any of that white. So you're gonna mat on a decent amount of that darker gray paint. And that's what's gonna make those knots look more realistic on your faux branches. Once everything is complete, I just tied up the six of them with some jute twine. And this is awesome because they look great in Christmas decor, but I also have these in my fireplace year round. Nobody would guess that they are Dollar Tree pool noodles. And the other great thing is that they're super light, so they're easy to store. And if Finn happens to grab them, he's not going to get hurt. Let's take a quick pause to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. I am so thankful to them for partnering with me to bring you guys all of this Christmas inspiration. Skillshare is an online learning community and it's got a lot of different classes for creators and also just people who love to learn. It covers topics like photography, business, design, lifestyle. They even have some crafting videos on there. What I love is most of the classes are under 60 minutes and they've got short little chunk lessons inside of that 60 minutes. So I can crank those out during nap time, which is usually my areas of time that I can get stuff done throughout the day. I've been binging their iPhone photography classes for both Whiskey and Whip, but then also to help when I'm out with Finn and I wanna capture some great moments with my phone. I just finished the class iPhone Photography Essentials. It's taught by photographer Sean Dalton. And I learned a ton about lighting and how to compose better shots with my phone. So I would recommend it. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people to click the link down in the description, a free trial of their premium membership, which is awesome because you can get in there, try out the classes, and then see what you like before you invest in that paid membership. So head to that link down below and let's get back into the DIYs. This next one was created so many times by you guys. I've gotten tagged in so many things and I absolutely love it. It is this adorable winter beanie hat garland. So for this, you're gonna need some yarn, a toilet paper or paper towel roll, something to wrap it around. I'm using cardboard here and some scissors. I'm starting here by cutting some strips in my toilet paper roll to create the band of the little beanie hats. So you wanna create a little circle and that's what it's going to look like. So I'm chopping up multiple out of each of the toilet paper rolls that I have. Then to quickly create the same length strips of yarn, I'm wrapping it around about 50 times. And then I'm just cutting the one end. That's going to give me a pile like this of pieces of yarn that are about 12 inches long. So to start creating your hat, take one piece of yarn, double it up so you've got a little loop in the center. Take that loop. Wrap it around your little ring from your toilet paper cardboard and then hook it on. So here's what it looks like to hook it on and then you're gonna continue that process around the entire outside of the little ring so that you have a, what starts to look like a beanie hat. So slowly again, you're gonna fold it in half, take a loop, reach through the loop and then pull the ends through so that they are hooked to your little paper towel roll. These might seem a little tedious, but I just did it one night watching a Netflix show. It's a great thing to do while you're watching like Hallmark Christmas movies. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> then when you're done, it's going to look like this. And you're going to want to flip through all those pieces of yarn to make it really look like a hat. Then when you're done with that, you're going to gather your hat at the top. And depending on how tall you want your hat, figure that out. And then tie a knot right about where you want all of your pieces of yarn to meet. 
When that's done, your last step is to just take some scissors and cut a little pom-pom at the top of your hat. The pom-pom can be as large or as small as you want. You just use your scissors and kind of give them a little haircut. There are a ton of different options to use these for. I just used some unfinished wood beads as well as some Dollar Tree pearls and did some white hats and gray hats and strung them up for a garland in my bathroom. I've seen people make them into little ornaments or you can hook them on the end of a farmhouse bead strand. You could make a larger one and have it be a hat for a gnome. There are a ton of different options and it's really easy to do with just some yarn and a toilet paper roll, which you probably have at your house. So for years, I had seen these little metal buckets with some stencil on it that was so expensive. And then I got the idea to recreate it with a Dollar Tree trash can. So you can use whatever Dollar Tree container that you have. And if it's a crazy color like mine, just take some white spray paint to neutralize it before you do this. If you've got a lighter color, you could probably just do this technique right over the top. But I just wanted to know that I wasn't trying to cover up all that blue. Then when my spray paint dried, I went in with this galvanized metal finish, this technique that I learned from Yami over at the Latina Next Door. I will link her channel down below. If you don't follow her, be sure to check her out. But I started with some medium gray paint and a little makeup sponge and started dabbing it around the outside. The dabbing is going to start to create a galvanized look and that's how your bucket's going to look like faux metal. I also made sure to go around the lip of the basket just to make sure that if my greenery didn't cover it, that it still looked like a metal basket on the inside. So as you can see here, it's a little blotchy, but that's what you're going for. Then I grabbed a darker gray. I'm using dark granite from Apple Barrel and I went over the top and did the exact same thing. The reason you want the blotchy lighter gray underneath is for any of the areas where you're not getting full coverage. And here you want some areas to be a little bit darker, some to be a little bit lighter. So don't worry if you're not getting full coverage, that's actually what you want. The last step I did was go over in sporadic areas, just kind of as I went, did the same blotching, but with some metallic gray paint. That just gives it a little bit of shine. And then this is optional, but I wanted to add a little bit of rust. So I took some nutmeg brown on my finger and just kind of wiped that around the top rim as well as the bottom rim. My last step was to create this cardstock stencil to put on the letters because I knew I couldn't stick on a Cricut stencil because I would rip off all of that paint I just used. So here I just used a stencil font in Cricut Design Space, cut out what I wanted, and then I cut it out on cardstock. And because it was a stencil font, all of the letters are hooked together. So your insides of A's and B's and O's aren't going to fall out. And that's how I was able to do this technique. Then when everything was dry, my last step was just to add some hot glue and some nautical rope from Dollar Tree to add some handles and I was finished. Displayed here, I've got some greenery picks I got on clearance at Michael's and then I also added some fairy lights to have it look like fresh greenery. You could use whatever size container that you have. You could also find cheap metal containers at Hobby Lobby as well if you don't want to galvanize your own and just put a similar decal on the front. I will link this design down below over on my blog if you want to make something very similar. It'll be the exact stencil font here that you can use to recreate it. Number eight is a fun dupe for those circular door hangers that are super popular right now. So I decided to use some Dollar Tree foam board and trace a circular wreath sign that I already had to create this. You can use a bowl or whatever you've got. You don't have to use another sign, but that was the size I wanted. Then I just cut out the circle that I traced with a hobby knife. I like to use that because it gives me a lot cleaner of a cut. And then when I got everything cut out, I just took a little bit of fine grit sandpaper. So like a 200 or 220 grit and just lightly went over the edges so that it wasn't rough at all. Then for the base of my sign, I covered my circle with some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. Now my circle happened to be just a teeny bit larger than my piece of scrapbook paper. I wasn't too worried though. I cut it as best I could and then I added some scraps on the edges. I knew I was going to add some greenery as well as some ribbon. So I wasn't too worried that it wasn't perfect on the edges. Then while that Mod Podge was drying, I took one of these wood cutouts from Dollar Tree and painted it white to say merry and bright. Dollar Tree has a ton of really pretty cutouts. They've been adding more and more each year. So this is a fun way to make a sign. Last year I was so obsessed 
obsessed with these little picks from Walmart. I bought so many because they were so great for projects. Dollar Tree has great greenery too, so wherever you can find it. I just like to tie two picks in the center and hot glue it on. I hot glued my wording on. And then to finish off the center there, I took a strip of burlap and made one of my little pinch ribbons. So you're gonna cut off your burlap in a length that works. And then you're going to fold it just like a cancer awareness ribbon, pinch the center, and then tie it with some jute twine to create a fun kind of full messy bow. And then I just took a pile of hot glue, stuck it on to my little sprigs that I had together there. And then to finish off the sign so that I could hang it, I added one loop of jute twine across the top and then I added some more hot glue over the top and let it dry. And this is the perfect sign to go over this wreath that I got from Walmart last year. I'm sure they'll carry it again. They've had it the past couple years and they always sell out, but it is a faux cedar wreath and it looks so good with this sign over the top. If you're not putting it in a wreath, you could also finish off the edges with the same color as your scrapbook paper, but here you can't see the edges, so I wasn't too worried about it. Number nine is for all of my baking fans out there. I made one of these for my fall Cricut Blanks video and you guys loved it. So many of you have recreated it, so I wanted to share this Christmas one. All you need is a Dollar Tree glass trivet. I went with the square, but you could do the circle as well. Cut out this decal, which is a free download over on my blog, but you can also make your own. I applied it to the top of the trivet because this was just gonna be decorative. However, if you do wanna apply it where you can use it, you can mirror your image and apply it to the back of the trivet just so then that way the vinyl isn't directly on the top. If you're interested in that, I'll link that tutorial for the fall one because that's how I did that one because so many of you guys suggested that last year. And once your Mod Podge dries, it will dry clear and matte. And then you have this really fun North Pole milk and cookies little trivet. This is really cute with our Christmas Eve setup for Santa. These are super easy and super adorable. I grabbed a wide assortment of these hat ornaments that Dollar Tree has every year, as well as some more of those little styrofoam balls that I showed before. And this time I'm using the ones that come in a pack of three. The first thing I did was cut off enough of the top where the hat could sit flat on the little snowman head. And once I did that, I peeled off any of the excess pieces. Sometimes Dollar Tree goes a little crazy with adding embellishments to things and it doesn't necessarily match my vibe. So I decided to pull some of it off and then add some faux cedar that matches more of my vibe. If the hat looks like your decor, totally leave it. But I also wanted to show you that if something doesn't look like how you want it, you can just fix it real quick. So then here was my hat with the cedar and then I added some of the berries back on and then took some hot glue to the top of my little styrofoam and stuck my hat on to create my little snowman head. Then I decided to go through and hand draw a variety of different faces. You can do them all the same. I just went on Pinterest and typed in snowman faces and it gave me a lot of pictures that I could kind of look at and trace, especially with two colors, it was easy to do. If you're worried about painting, you could also grab a Sharpie in orange and black and go that route as well. Once they were dry, I decided to take five of them and string them up into a garland, but you could also use them just as ornaments. This would be really cute to tie onto a bottle of wine to give as a gift or something with a tag as a teacher gift. You could also add some vinyl to the hat that says, you know, snow place like home or whatever snow pun you wanna throw in there. But I think these are super cute. I actually was thinking about where I was gonna put this this year and I remembered I gave this to my mom cause she liked it. So might be making another one of these for 2021. But that's a nice thing with all the stuff that I make, I can share it with others. Number 11 is a Kirkland's dupe that I did last year and I absolutely loved how this turned out. They had a Christmas countdown sign for Kirkland's price and I knew I could dupe it. So I found one of these Dollar Tree signs in my stash. This is from a few years ago, but they always have some sort of tag sign for Christmas. And so I went through, I went through first on the back of the sign, I peeled off the sticker and then painted it red. Then using some painter's tape, I created a little box similar to my inspiration to paint with some black chalkboard paint so that Finn and I could go through and write whatever, how many sleeps there were until Santa came. 
My chalkboard paint looks a little goopy and that's usually not what it looks like. So don't worry that yours is defective. I'm pretty sure I had mine for far too long, but it still worked. So don't judge me, it happens. It gets lost in the abyss that is my craft stash. <laughs> But nonetheless, it dried just fine, and then I took some painter's tape to help me create some straight lines around the outside of my tag. I just taped it down, painted it, and then peeled it right back off. If you can draw straight lines, more power to you, and you can just do that with a paint pen or your paintbrush, but I like to use painter's tape when I can because I can't cut straight. We've established I usually can't draw straight, so just use the tools when you need it. Once everything was dry, then I cut out this little decal, which is a free one over on my blog that you can download to recreate this for your family. It says countdown to Christmas and how many sleeps there are until Santa comes. Now the original one said days, I'm pretty sure, my inspiration, but in our family, we count down sleeps till something. So two sleeps till this happens or three sleeps till we go to the zoo or whatever it is. So I decided to add that to the bottom. And then my last step was to do a bow at the top. So I cut a piece long enough, fold it into something that looks like an awareness ribbon, pinch the center, and then hook the center, tie it with some jute twine, and you've got a little bow that you didn't need to tie. I also followed the same process with some red and white buffalo check ribbon and tied that onto the front of my burlap bow. And then I used a little strip of scrap buffalo check fabric to wrap it over the center to cover that jute twine. This is such a fun and cute way to decorate for Christmas, especially with kids to count down to certain things. You could also have this be a chore chart or an advent calendar. You can really update it and have it be whatever you need it to be. That's the best part about DIY. You can take an idea and make it your own. Here's another fun take on some snowman decor that is made out of this Dollar Tree 3D hoop ring. Now, if you can't find this particular one, you could also make something similar with a regular wreath form. So don't worry if you can't find this particular one. These were just readily available last year. I started in one corner and used some hot glue as well as my finger protector, also from Dollar Tree, to start my jute twine. And then I continued to wrap it around corner to corner with a little dot of glue to kind of hook it because when I was originally wrapping it, it was sliding on me. So this little dab of hot glue is gonna make it so things aren't popping off on you. Then I just continued that process until the circle was covered as much as I wanted it to be. I needed it to be covered enough so that I could glue on his buttons and things later, which you'll see, but it's totally personal preference. Once I had two of those circles, I took another piece of jute twine and just tied the two together. And then I grabbed some scrap foam board from Dollar Tree to cut out all of his features. So I just freehanded a nose and then I used a little bottle of paint just to trace some circles for his mouth and his eyes and his buttons. So then I'm using my Arteza hobby knife here which cuts really cleanly, I really like this tool and I cut out all of my pieces, gave them a quick sand on the edges so that they didn't have those little wispy flyaways. And then I painted my nose orange with some chalk paint and also used some black chalk paint for the other circles. The last Next step was to assemble the guy. So here is where you want to make sure you have enough of the jute twine so that you have surface area to glue it down to. I just took some hot glue, stuck them down, and then this is a Dollar Tree scarf that I tied on to my little friend. This is a great door hanger. I also love that I went with the black and white one because this can stay up well past Christmas, which I am a huge fan of. I like a lot of winter decor for Christmas, woods and blacks and whites and things so that you can get a lot more bang for your buck when you're going to decorate. Number 13 is a movie reference. So leave me a comment real quick if you know this movie. So to make this, I grabbed a jar from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever jar you can find there. It doesn't have to be this one. It's just what I could find. And I first took some of this apple red spray paint and spray painted the lid outside. Then I measured my circle and created this cut file that will also be available over on my blog for the world's best cup of coffee. 
And one thing I would suggest is if you have one of these twist on lids from Dollar Tree, apply it to your lid while it's tight on your container. I didn't do that here and unfortunately it doesn't line up straight for me when I go to put it on. So make sure that you put it on your jar and then apply it. Here I have to just display it with a little bit of a not tight lid. The last thing I did was wrap around a little bit of baker's twine that was red and white around the center and put this on our coffee bar. This is great. You could put sugar in this. You could put some cinnamon in this. Whatever you want to add to your little coffee bar is cute. You could also use this cut file on a little Dollar Tree sign if you would rather not have a glass container. There are a ton of options and you don't have to use my cut files exactly how I use them. This is just a way to give you inspiration. This one is also from my Dollar Tree Cricut Blanks video last year for Christmas. So if you missed that one, I will link that down below because there are a ton more projects in there that I couldn't fit in here. And this is made from their unfinished wood cutout stars that they have every year. I started by taking some dark walnut stain from Minwax and staining both of my stars. And then I came in and took some white chalk paint and painted them. I first started with a really light dry brush effect and I wasn't a huge fan of all of the wood kind of showing through. I went a little bit heavier with my painting technique so that there was only a little bit kind of showing and I liked that a lot better. Then I have these two files that are also going to be available over in the link on my blog for you to download. I did Silent Night and All is Calm, All is Bright, but you could put whatever you want on them. I used some paper transfer tape to put them on so that I didn't rip off every piece of paint that I just put on. That's from Expressions Vinyl. I share that a lot. I'll put the link down below. And then to finish it off, I just added some jute twine back on. These are really cute as signs on their own, but what I did with these is I put them in my tree as large ornaments. So they were a really nice statement piece and I think this year I'll have to grab some more from Dollar Tree to make some larger big ornaments for my tree. I am part of the team that says you can never have enough throw pillows, but you can spend too much for throw pillows. I can definitely say that. So these are two Kirkland's dupes I made with some Dollar Tree placemats. For the past two or three years, they've had these. And so what I decided to do was take some heat transfer vinyl. I cut out this file again. This is going to be free over on my blog for you to download. I pressed it with my heat press and then just peeled off that carrier sheet and I had the sleigh bells ring are you listening on there and then I just used my pillow technique with some hot glue to put it together. So basically you need this one that you have the saying on as well as a second one that will be the back. So lay the back one with the outside down then I put this one up and I went around the outside with some hot glue except for a little area where I had some space to stuff it with my hand. Then I just grabbed some stuffing from an old pillow I wasn't using and I went ahead and stuffed the pillow. Then when it was done, I just took some hot glue and sealed up the edge. And then I also decided to go through with a blanket stitch around the outside. This is totally optional, but I like the little effect that it gave on the top and the bottom. I also have this free cut file from my Kirkland's dupe video last year, so I will put this in the folder as well if you want to do that. There's no place like home for the holidays. Their pillow, I think they were selling for 45 bucks, and I made this for under five, so win-win. Each season, I swear, Dollar Tree keeps getting better and better with the cuteness of their window clings. So here's a thing that you can use them for that's not on your window. I grabbed two different sizes of jars as well as these really cute watercolor window clings from Dollar Tree and I spray painted one of the jars white and then I just took some Mod Podge onto the white lid and added this little circle joy to create a really fun and festive jar. I put some Mod Podge over the top and then added some jute twine and this is a really easy way that you could share some holiday candy. It would be cute if you could just put some socks and a Starbucks gift card in there. This is a really cute piece of decor but it also would be great for gifting. Another idea is to just apply the window clings to the glass portion of your jar, seal it with the Mod Podge, and then I decided to create a peppermint lid. So I just cut out to the size of my lid a little peppermint. I just cut it in black and white. I scribbled on the back with a pencil so that I could create a 
like little faux transfer and then I traced the peppermint onto the lid. Then I was able to take some red paint and a little brush and paint on the peppermint little motif. You can seal it with Mod Podge if you want. Then I just added some red and white baker's twine to the top and this again would be so cute. It would also be really cute on a s'mores bar. I could see you putting some marshmallows in there. It could also be for a hot cocoa bar. Tons of different options, but don't sleep on those window clings because you can make a lot of great stuff with them. We're getting all the rustic vibes with this one and this is a quick way to transform a Dollar Tree LED candle. So the first thing I did was take this little slice cutter. You can use um, whatever cutter that you have, a box cutter, just be careful. And I went and drew some lines in the actual candle. As you can see, a little bit of the little wispies are coming off, but I drew some squiggly lines. I tried to do a couple that looked like knots and trees. I just really tried to make it look natural and like it was not matchy matchy or symmetrical. Then to get those lines to pop, I took some brown paint, which this is nutmeg brown, and I painted over all of the lines. Then I just took a paper towel and wiped off the extra, so then that way it was in those little crevices, but it didn't make the whole candle brown. Once that was complete, then I went over the top with a little bit of gray and white paint and I'm mixing it together and then I'm kind of going over the top and then wiping it. And I originally found out that I did too much because it covered up all of those little brown pieces. So if that's the case, just go back over with the brown and you can easily fix it. So that's the nice thing. If you screw up, you can fix it. So then once I did that dry brush of the kind of grayish white stuff over the top, then it looked a lot more like a birch candle. To finish it off, this is optional, you can leave it as is, but I just did some jute twine and a little ornament that I got from Walmart, as well as some faux cedar that came from a wreath I got on clearance, and I trimmed it up, and then this little thing is awesome. It's so cute for vignettes. It looks very similar to birch wood, and it also looks really pretty when it glows. Sometimes if you put stuff on the outside of an LED candle, it looks kind of icky when it glows, but this one has a really pretty glow. Do you remember a couple minutes ago when I told you not to sleep on the Dollar Tree transfers? Here's another idea. Grab whatever frame you like from their frame section. I really liked this mercury glass one from last year. And from that same pack, I found this really cute VW bug. It fit really good on the 5x7 frame. And then I just painted the back with some white paint so that it popped in the frame. Then once that was all dry, I just popped it back in the frame. And once that was done, I had a really cute little sign, this VW bug. You could also put lettering on that and paint the back black for a chalkboard effect, but it looks really cute with those little snowball lights that I shared earlier, and I really liked how the mercury glass frame gave it kind of a Christmas winter feel. Especially now with us not seeing folks as much as we have in the past around the Christmas season, Christmas cards have been making a resurgence, I think. So I wanted to share how to take some Dollar Tree foam board and make this really cute snowman merry mail display. So I measured a piece of foam core and I cut it in half so that I had my central part of my little snowman. You can make this as big or as small as you want. Then with the extra foam that I had left over, I cut a piece that would be the hat as well as a strip that would be the brim of his hat. So a square and then a little piece there. Then I painted the hat black. I'm just using some chalk paint right over the top. If your Dollar Tree has some black foam board and you wanna go that route, go ahead. But you wanna make sure that you get the edges to be black so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Then here you could either do a decal on a Cricut if you have that, or here I just decided to freehand it. I took a pencil and wrote Merry Mail, and then I just took some white chalk paint and traced over the top. Mm -hmm. 
Then I glued the hat together and applied it to the top of my little snowman piece, used some weight to hold it down. And then I painted on two eyes by kind of doing a little circle swoosh of my paintbrush. Then I also did the same thing for three buttons. I did the mouth and then I also went in with some orange paint for the nose. No snowman is complete without a super cute and cozy scarf, so I just used some ribbon I had on hand to tie it on. And then I added some little clothespins, but you could use regular size, whatever you have, around the top and the hat so that you could clip on your cute little cards. So here's what they look like when they're glued on. And then you can just go through as you get your Christmas cards and just clip them on and you have a really cute little display that you could easily make for a couple bucks. You could switch it out each year or you could also add some jute twine to the back to hang it on the wall because it's so lightweight. I have a wood one and when I made this last year I actually had to use both of them because we got a ton of Christmas cards last year. It's a nice way to just display what you get and also to kind of see everybody's smiling face throughout the holiday season. My number 20 is one of my favorite signs. If you've been around a while, you know I love these Dollar Tree pennant signs, but you could use whatever hanging sign you can find at Dollar Tree to do the same technique. So the first thing I did was find a piece of fabric that would cover my sign. So I used this buffalo check because I love buffalo check for Christmas, but you could find any print that you want. You could also use scrapbook paper. I cut it down to size and then added some Mod Podge to hook down my fabric. I started at the top and worked my way down section by section to make sure everything was applied to the sign. Then when I got to the bottom, I just cut some slits so that I could easily tuck up the overhang pieces so my fabric would wrap around the edges so that I would have a clean look. When I was done, here is what my fabric sign looked like. And then to finish it off, I took one of these little Dollar Tree wood plaques, I stained it with some dark walnut stain, and then I cut out that same decal that I put on the pillow earlier. It's called Sleigh Bells Ring, are you listening? This one will be available over in my folder over on my blog. It's just a Google Drive folder, and you can download these and cut them on your machine. I finished off the top by adding some of those Walmart sprigs I loved so much with some hot glue and then I added just a traditional bow of some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon, glued it down so it wouldn't move on me and this looks so cute on our little boxwood wreath. Every time I show this I get a lot of questions. This wreath is from Marshalls a while ago but they usually have a lot of pretty wreath options that you can choose from. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all of that inspiration in this video. Huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and also a huge thank you to Courtney for collabing with me again. I love doing these with her. Be sure to go check out her video next. You can keep that Christmas train going. Let me know down below when do you plan to start your Christmas DIYs. I'm bringing you this early content so that you can come find me. I'll be here when you are ready for Christmas projects. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.